Every spring, a lot of people wander out into our, our wooded areas to look for morel mushrooms. And, and these are a, a species of mushroom that are fairly easy to identify. And today we're gonna go through uh, some of the identifying characteristics and we're gonna go on a morel mushroom hunt to see if we can find a great basket of morels to take home as a delicacy to put on our tables. Some of the key things that I look for when I'm hunting morel mushrooms are the tree species that make up that forest composition. Now, we have many different species of morels throughout the U.S. and we have uh, several even in Nebraska. Many of these though, and our most common ones, we'll find on elms and large cottonwood trees and some on ashes. Now there are other tree species that they can grow on, but these are the main ones that I target. The other part that we look for are trees with injury. These trees are the host for this fungus. And when that tree is injured, many times that will stimulate the fungus to produce these fruiting structures that we're harvesting that are the morel mushroom. So when you're out and about, I tend to target my, my path just walking towards elms that are in the forest composition, large cottonwoods, looking around the bases of those if you're in forest with, with many of these trees, going towards those that have a broken branch or wind damage. Sometimes even if there's an area where they've done some excavation or they've removed trees, that spring can be a year where we see a large flush of, of the fruiting structures coming out as a result of that host being removed. And sometimes even in extension, we'll get a call of someone having a tree removed and then having a large flush of morel mushrooms in their front yard. So these are some of the key things. Now, when we're looking for morel mushrooms and we're harvesting them, we can use a variety of things to do that. Some people like mesh bags, some people use baskets. I like a large bright colored basket so I can set that down usually when I find the first one and then circle around and look closely and examine that area for others that are, that are usually associated. You will sometimes only find one, but many times you'll find several that will often be circled around a damaged tree. If we look at the identifying characteristics for morels, when we split them, they're going to be hollow inside. They look a lot like a sponge on a small stem, uh, but again, they'll be hollow. Now in contrast, there are also something called fa false morels. Our false morels can, can be confused. They look quite different as you can see here, uh, but they are solid in the center. These can get very large. I've seen false morels as large as five pounds. Um, and so with this, uh, by cutting that stem, we'll know that we've got a false morel compared to a true morel. And false morels are considered poisonous, so we want to avoid that in our collection. Now keep in mind that when you're out uh, collecting any type of wild fungus, we would never recommend eating that unless you're with someone that truly knows what they're doing and out with an experienced individual. Because there are species that can make you very ill uh, that you could harvest. And always remember that there are old mushroom hunters and there are bold mushroom hunters, but there are never many old bold mushroom hunters. Have fun when you're out this summer.